so hey everyone let's continue the last video and i forgot to show you the uh, the data being created on a mongodb atlas so this is the data which we created in the last video okay so which mean everything is working fine now what we need to do which i told you that now we need to store this uh, token in a flutter secure storage as you remember so as of now i can just remove this main dot dot and all those stuff as you remember at the time of creating the network handler what we did we did the this uh, store token kind of function creating right so where we are just storing the token so now it is time to use this store token function and we can directly going to call it just after making the api call so we have to use the network handler again and in the network handler network handler okay and we need to use the network handler dot store token okay in the store token what we just need to do we need to provide a token string okay the token string which we are getting from the backend so here so here i am not doing error handling those stuff it's up to you that how you will going to handle the error okay so please handle the error very carefully if if i give you a response other than the 200 or 201 then you should handle the error as well but i am not covering that part okay so i am directly doing the stuff that everything will work working fine okay so we don't get any error i'm i'm just supposing that we will not get any api error in the future so that's why directly after making the api call and getting a response i am storing the token not doing any kind of error error handling so if you remember in the login controller to access the uh, the message we use this kind of fundamental right similarly to access the token we have to use the valid key so here we have to provide the valid key and it will going to access the token okay and here also we have to decode the response okay i just forgot to decode it so from the uh, back end we are getting the json string right and we need to decode it before using the json string we need to decode it in a normal format so we have to use the dot dot io or dot dot convert to import this json thing and it will going to decode the response into map type of object and now we can access the token easily so it's not now not a a normal G string now it is a map type of object okay for handling this kind of thing also we can make a model class okay so as of now the model class which we created which is handling for the post stuff right now to handle the uh, the response which we are getting from the back end for that too we can make a model class so instead of accessing the field like this we can create a model class and we can pass it and we can use it like the way we did over here okay but don't worry we will going to do that kind of thing in the next coming videos where we will get a complex json data from the back end so right now we are getting just two fill from the back end that is the token and the message but near in the future we will going to get a multiple fill as a gate method and for that we will going to make a model class and you will going to understand that how you will going to create a model class for those kind of thing i mean for the response and how you will pass it properly and use it on your front end side so the, just don't worry as of now just focus on the part which we are discussing okay so now with help of the store token method we have stored the token okay but what will be the next step the next step will going to be navigate into the home page okay so we will going to use the gate and uh, let me check the gate dot dot is already added and uh, we have to use the gate of okay gate of all so what it will going to do so uh, basically whenever we 
do this kind of thing so in a navigator stack we put all the thing okay so the stack will create it so suppose if i will click on a back then we can easily go back right so whenever i will click this then this thing is put it on a navigator stack okay then I, if i will hit the continue then we navigate it into the okay i guess after continue we need to clear this out so after clicking on a continue we have navigated into the register page right so in the stack of the navigator stack actually we are putting all the pages one by one so if we click back then we just i mean pop that thing from the stack and go back on the old page okay so that is thing happening but what we wanted to do that after registering a user what we wanted to do that we wanted to directly navigate into the home page okay so and we wanted to clear the stack as well so for that case we had to use the get of all it will clear out all the stack so after registering if you click on a bag then you will never going to go back on the login bottom sick page okay so that is the funda that after doing a registration or login we have to clear out the navigator stack okay so for that case we use the get dot of all and here we need to provide the page so what will be the page the page will going to be the home page or i can check the main dot dart file what we are showing so it is a landing page so after this thing i am going to go on a landing page and now it's a duty of the landing page what it supposed to do okay so landing page so if i will hit the save okay and i have changed the number right 1 2 3 4 5 so in the back end also we have a validation if i will try to register the same mobile number then it will give us a error okay so now i am using the second mobile number suppose 1 2 3 4 5 6 and after that if everything will go fine then we are storing a token and we are navigating into the landing page okay so in the meantime uh we have to use the await over here because if i will go on a network handler so where it go so in the network handler it will be a future void so lot of stuff we written earlier but i haven't validated so this is one of those because we are using the await that's why it should return a future okay and we should await till the token will store okay then after only we will going to navigate into the landing page let me hit it again and uh, let's see if i will click on a create account and this time oh i have to put a password test it did 1 2 3 i can kept it without the name but let me put dev stack 1 2 3 email is at the rate okay mail mobile number 9876543211 hint test let's do the create account so it should store the token and after storing the token we are navigating into the landing page and in our case the landing page is this page where we have the home page first okay but how we will know that we are logged in or not okay so suppose if we go on a profile page then nothing is changed right as of now we need to show the user data over here so if you open a real mintra app as of now because my mac os is gone i don't have the picture as of now so in a real mintra app what we are showing is we are showing the name in the mobile number or some detail instead of this login and sign up button okay that thing we need to do over here and how we will do it let's do it in a next video okay so in the next video let's show the name and all those thing but yeah remember here we will going to make a api call okay here we will going to make a api call and ask a back end about the user detail the one thing we can do we can store i mean 
at the time of hitting the register endpoint at the same time so if i will go on a back end side okay so here at the time of hitting the register endpoint if the successful registration is happening we are sending the token at the same time we can we can send the user detail like the mobile number email gender and name and all okay and in the front end we can store it in a shared preferences or secure storage okay but in a real world what will happen that it will going to make a api call okay so now we need a data we need a user related data right so now we will going to make a get api call and after making the get api call we will get the data and we will show that data over here and we will going to do the same thing okay we will going to make a new get api call and after making the get api call we will going to get the user detail in a front end side and we will going to show it over here okay so let's do that thing let's first make a api call and then we will integrate that api in a front end part i hope you enjoyed this video so please don't forget to subscribe the channel like the video and share the video